Hello everyone and welcome to stress lesson two. So in this lesson we are going to look at the role of stress in illness and that includes reference to immunosuppression and cardiovascular disorders. Okay so just to start with I'm going to give you a really really quick and basic crash course to the human immune system. Biologists among you feel free to not listen while I completely destroy what I'm sure you know much better than I do. So the human immune system is our defense barrier against invading germs and other foreign bodies. Now these foreign bodies are known as antigens. Now one line of defense that we have is innate. Okay, so it's within us, we're born with it. These are things such as white blood cells and natural killer cells, for example. Okay, so you've got white blood cells there, the picture on the left, and you've got some natural killer cells on the right. The natural killer cell is the yellow bit, and that is attacking an antigen. The second line of, of defense that we have is called acquired immunity. So acquired immunity is specific to the invading antigen in question because our body knows what that antigen is because it has encountered it before. Okay, so this is an, an acquired response and it involves things called lymphocytes and lymphocytes destroy specific antigens. Okay, so you've got things called B cells that produce antibodies and then you've also got various different types of what's known as T cells such as memory T cells. Memory T cells remember, in the basic of senses, remember things that have been in your body before, antigens that your body has encountered before. And then you also have killer T cells, which destroy cells that are infected with antigens. Okay, so you've got a lot, lot of different cells that all work together to kind of produce this first and second layer of protection that your body has. And obviously, we rely on that protection to stop us getting poorly. Now, stress can suppress our immune system directly. So for example, if you remember back to the last lesson, cortisol, which is produced by the HPA axis, inhibits the production of lymphocytes. And if the lymphocytes are being inhibited, then they can't destroy specific antigens that um, our body may be under attack from. Now, as much as that is a direct impact on our immune system, stress can also have an indirect impact as well in that it influences certain lifestyle behaviors such as smoking, such as drinking. It can also impact our sleep patterns as well. And the fact that stress impacts these different areas of our life can in turn have a detrimental effect on our immune functioning. And there's evidence that this happens in many different stress experiences. Okay, so what we are going to do, we're going to look at a whole range of studies. This topic is particularly study heavy because it builds a lot on what the lesson before was. Okay, you will need to know the majority of these studies. Um, so try and remember them as best you can. So we're going to start with a couple of studies that look at the effect of chronic stress on the immune system. Okay, so we're going to look at research by Janice Kikolt Glaser, who investigated the effect of two long-term stresses. One was preparing for exams, and the other one was looking after relatives who are ill. Okay, so the first study, Kikolt Glaser et al. in 1984 investigated the effects of exams. So they looked at 75 medical students who gave blood samples twice, one month before an exam period, which was the low stress period, and on the day of the first exam, which was the high stress period. They also completed questionnaires measuring sources of stress and self-reported psychological symptoms of stress as well. Now their findings showed that the activity of natural killer and killer T cells decreased between the first and the second samples, evidence of an immune response being suppressed by a common stressor. This decline was most apparent in students who reported feeling lonely and in those experiencing other sources of stress, such as significant events in their lives. Okay, so that's your first study. Your second study 
also by Kikot and Glaser in 1991. And this time, they carried out a longitudinal study in which they compared the health and immune functioning of two groups of people. The first group was caregivers who were looking after a relative with Alzheimer's disease. And the second group were a matched group of non-caregivers. Okay, so that was a control group. What they found was that the caregivers showed an increase in antibodies to the Epstein-Barr virus, which is a herpes virus. However, there were no such increases in the control participants. So this finding is a clear indicator of a weaker cell-based immune response in those caregivers. The caregivers also had infectious illnesses on significantly more days than those in the control group, and they also had higher levels of depression, with 32% of the caregivers meeting the criteria for clinical depression, whereas only 6% in the control group met those criteria. Okay, so again, you've got a study that shows quite clearly that chronic stressors can affect your immune system quite dramatically. Okay, moving on, we'll now have a little look at cardiovascular disorders. Okay, so there is also evidence that that stress can contribute to the development of various cardiovascular disorders, such as heart disease and strokes. And it appears that stress can have both immediate and long-term effects on cardiovascular disorders. And we're now going to have a look at two studies that show that. So the first study is a study of acute stress. Okay, so a good example of an event that can be considered an acute stressor is a sudden emotional arousal. So researchers Wilbert Lampen et al. in 2008 looked at incidences of heart attacks during football matches played in Germany during the 1996 World Cup. And what they found was that on days when Germany played, cardiac emergencies increased by 2.66 times compared with a control period. So they concluded that the acute emotional stress of watching your favorite football team can more than double your risk of suffering a cardiovascular event. Moving on to the chronic stress study, Yosef et al. in 2004 examined chronic stresses in the inter-heart study. The Interheart study was an investigation involving 52 countries seeking to identify major risk factors for cardiovascular disorders that exist across different cultures. They compared 15,000 people who had heart attacks with similar numbers of people who had not. What they found was that chronic stresses with a strong link to heart attacks included workplace stress and stressful life events. Now, the worrying thing that they found as well was that the contribution of stress was greater than the contribution of obesity, and it was third only to smoking and cholesterol levels. Okay, so you've had four studies there, um, two on the role of immunosuppression and another two on the impact on cardiovascular disorders. Okay, so like I said before, these studies aren't quite important. If you can't remember all of them, then at least try to remember one from each. However, remembering all of them would be preferable just simply because you could get an essay on the entire topic or you could get an essay on one or the other. Okay, so it's always nice to be able to flesh those out where possible. So we'll have a look at, at a couple of evaluation points now. I've chosen three for you that I think are good, but obviously feel free to use any ones that you want. So first off, we're going to have a look at some research that shows that in some situations, stress may enhance the activity of the immune system. So it goes against this idea that stress is always a bad thing. So you've got Evans et al., for example, who looked at the activity of an antibody called SIG-A, which helps to protect against infections. So Evans et al. arranged for students to give a talk to other students, which would be acute stress. These students showed an increase in SIG-A, whereas levels of SIG-A decreased during examination periods, which lasted several weeks. Therefore, Evans et al. proposed that stress may have two effects on the immune system. It can have an effect called upregulation, which essentially means increased efficiency for acute stress. 
and also an effect called down regulation, which is decreased efficiency for chronic stress. Okay, that was also supported by a meta-analysis by somebody called Siegerstrom and Miller in 2004, who reviewed almost 300 studies of stress and the immune system and found that short-term stressors actually promote the body's ability to fight infection. However, they also found that the longer the stress goes on for, the more the immune system shifts from potentially adaptive changes to potentially harmful ones. Okay, so you've got a nice bit of research there. Actually, you've got two bits of research there that show that stress can be good. Acute stress actually increases the immune activity. However, it's the chronic stress that we need to be aware of because it's chronic stress that actually decreases the immune activity. Okay, moving on, we have this idea that actually stress and illness don't really have a particularly simple relationship. So you've got Lazarus in 1992 who suggests that there are various reasons why a relationship between stress and illness is difficult to establish. So you've got number one, health is affected by many, many different factors, including genetic influences, lifestyles, and so on. So it's difficult to kind of peel apart the impact of stress and the impact of all the other things. Number two, health is usually fairly stable and slow to change. So as a result, it makes it very difficult to demonstrate that exposure to a particular stressor has caused a change in health. And number three, to demonstrate how stress affects long-term health would involve continuous measurement over time. And continuous measurement over time is expensive and impractical. And that's why most research actually concentrates on relatively short periods of time, which means that we're not really getting an accurate measurement of how stress affects health long term. OK, so there's not a simple relationship between stress and illness and actually picking apart the relative impact of stress on our health and on illness is very, very difficult for those particular reasons. And then a final one, we have some supporting research for the impact of stress on cardiovascular disorder. There is a huge body of research that's linked the two together. So for example, you have Sheps et al in 2002, who focused research on volunteers with ischemia. Ischemia is slow blood flow to the heart. So they gave 173 men and women a variety of psychological tests, which also included a public speaking test. What they found was that their blood pressure soared dramatically. And in half of them, sections of the muscle of the left ventricle began to beat erratically. Out of all the participants, 44% of them who displayed the erratic heartbeat died within four years of that study compared to only 18% who didn't. This shows that psychological stress can dramatically increase the risk of death in people with poor coronary artery circulation. Again, providing support for the idea that stress can affect cardiovascular disorders. Right, so I hope all of those have made sense. That is now the end of the evaluation bits that I have for you. Obviously, there are more evaluations out there. And for those of you who are pushing for 14, 15, or even 16 out of 16 on an essay, then you might want to choose a fourth evaluation point as well. But three is more than enough for a band four essay um, for most of you. Okay, so I'll just quickly now put those evaluation points up as peel paragraphs so that you can see what they would look like and how you could use them in an essay. So there's the stress can benefit immunity point, followed by stress and illness don't have a simple relationship. And then finally, the research support for the effects of stress on CVD. Okay, feel free to pause and go back at any point. But otherwise, that is now the end of the video. I hope it's all made sense. And thank you very much for listening.